always negative and we feel assaulted, um, whether it comes from Canada or across the world. So my question is, can you put into context the things that we are living in my lifetime, the number of genocides we have seen, the number of threats that we are seeing, um, I imagine that people who are of an older generation in this audience might say, well, in our time, it felt just as terrifying. What would you say? Are we in a time that is darker? Or is it that we are better informed about the darkness? That's a very good question. Um, I, I think that we are better informed. Uh, if we look at uh, history, what was it Gibbons said in the... the, the decline and fall of the Roman Empire, that history is about the crimes, follies, and misfortunes of mankind. And we live in a little historical bubble, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, it's from 1948, 70 years old, it's a whisper in the passage of time against 7,000 years of written history. And much of history is about rape, pillage, and murder. It's about the natural right of the victor to exterminate and enslave the vanquished. So we shouldn't take for granted that we even ask questions about injustice, that we are indignated that people are being killed for their beliefs. So I'm actually quite optimistic, but I also realize that uh, this is a very grim and painful process, which is why a culture of instant gratification, where we reduce activism to the Facebook life, isn't going to bring about social change. We have to learn the art of sacrifice, the art of struggle, and the joy of it, the joy of it. And I'm going to embarrass you, Sophie, in front of everyone, because I think you're a perfect example of someone who looked around and saw what she could do. I had a wonderful um, uh, talk uh, at a brunch which she organized uh, to help uh, Syrian refugees that had arrived here in Montreal. And at the end of the day, it's about people not pointing the finger at those evil people in power, um, but assuming responsibility. And the most lasting changes come from grassroots cultural transformations. So that's why we need to take very seriously the power of our own words, our own empathy, and realize that if we are silent at these times, then we are an accomplice to all the terrible things that we're witnessing. Cover of 
Time magazine showing the emaciated uh, concentration camp victims behind barbed wires. So, uh, you know, getting back to the question Sophie asked as well, the fact that we have this unprecedented access to information, especially visual imagery, combined with the fact that we no longer tolerate atrocities, uh, I think has created this new space, and we need to figure out how to maneuver that space. Now, in terms of the UN, I worked with the UN for about a decade. When I was a student intern, I, I was really excited about the UN. I was in New York, and I thought that this organization was going to save the world. And one of these cynical diplomats looked at me and said, son, there are three things you need to survive in the UN. Geritol, alcohol, and protocol. <laughs> I realized over time that he was dead serious. So, you know, one of the things I learned about the UN, and I tell young people, is the UN is it. Important organization, but it's hardly the only place you can do good in the world. And I increasingly believe in civil society. I increasingly believe in citizen sort of initiated, grassroots initiatives, and sustainable uh, engagement, as opposed to you know the one-off you put on your CV so you can get into law school. Uh, not to say that anyone's ever done that. Certainly not yet. <laughs> so, uh, one of the good NGOs. There are so many doing. So so many works there. I mean, right here down the street, there are amazing soup kitchens uh, feeding homeless people. There are shelters for battered women. There are organizations working with indigenous people who come to the big city and they are totally lost. And there are so many things you can do right here. It's not always the exotic adventure halfway across the world. And I'm speaking here as like the Indiana Jones of the human rights world. And I always say, no, you have to look at your own backyard. One of the stories that I tell um, in my final chapter is that on the day that Stephen Harper issued the apology for the residential schools, um, my, my friend Chief uh, Donovan Fontaine heard a knock at his door. He opened the door. There was an elderly immigrant couple with a plate of muffins. And they said, we heard what happened to your people. We want to express our sympathy. And it's incredible that he never forgot that. So many years later, that touched him so much, that gave him so much comfort and reassurance and healing. So what I'm saying is that there are so many ways in which we can become engaged. And I'm going to abuse my pulpit to say one last thing, Michael. I have two amazing boys, 13 and 17, and trust me, they speak true power against their father. <laughs> and my eldest son, when he was 14, he went to Kenya, Masai Mara, and he uh, had to go without the internet for a month, cold turkey. Was <laughs> right? He helped build a school, and at the school, he saw that there were no girls, there were all boys. He learned that the girls have to cook and clean and give birth when they're 12, 13 years of age. And he came in sense, he said to his mom, Mom, this is not right. Why is this going on? So his mom said, What are you going to do about it? 14 year old kid. Now he's 17, he has a charity called Girls Like the Future. He's raised funds to send 100 kids, uh, 100 girls to, to school in Kenya. Now his ambition is to expand the multinational corporation. <laughs> so what I'm saying is that it's these type of initiatives that cumulatively transform our culture and our politics in meaningful, sustainable ways, rather than the delusion that by electing this or that political party, we're going to, you know, achieve nirvana. So I think that there are many, many NGOs out there, and um, the, the, the problem is simply to choose what is your passion, what are your talents, and what is it that you can contribute. Thank you very much. I did promise one more question, and I do have a sense that people want to hear just a bit more, so let's have the last question again, if you could introduce yourself. My name is Ali 